who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Maybe we should look at this in a simpler translation to aid understanding. So let's look at this verse in NLT. If you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in large ones. So faithfulness is measured in how you handle the things that are little. Your measure of faithfulness is not in when you have great opportunities. Your measure of faithfulness is in when you are in the situation where it is little. So if, if, if we bring that into our finances, if you do not consecrate your finances when they are little, you will not consecrate your finances when they are much. Someone that has not learned the way of tithing in little cannot tithe in much. Someone that has not learned the way of giving and sacrifice in little cannot give and sacrifice in much. You know, people say things like, um, the reason I, I'm not giving now is because I don't have much. If God, or when God begins to bless me more, I will begin to give more. If you cannot give where you are on the ladder of life now, you cannot give when God advances you in life. Your faithfulness, the track record of your faithfulness begins to count when you are in the place of little things. It's the same thing in our Christian service. If God is going to promote you in the realm of the spirit, if you have not shown faithfulness in the little that has been committed into your hand, God will never commit great things into such a life. Many people who pray, who ask God for heavy anointing, ask God for fire because they want to take nations, the reason it looks as if God is not answering those prayers is that you don't have a track record of faithfulness. It's a law in the spirit that if you have not shown a track record in little things, you don't qualify. The realm of the spirit is not permitted to usher greater things into your hand because you do not have a track record of faithfulness. So even in your finances, God checks your faithfulness. You earn a salary of 10,000, maybe you are teaching in one of these private schools that have made it a, a pattern to enslave the people that work for them. So they, 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 they recruit you and you teach all the subjects. You teach all the classes. And at the end of the month, salary is 17,000. Now, even as little as 17,000 naira is, you must have developed yourself to a level whereby when you receive your salary, you give God his portion, you remove what is offering, you remove what is transport, and whatever is left, you make up your mind that there must be somebody that will be blessed from your life, no matter how little it is. Even if it is 500, you say, this brother, this sister, at least me, I get work. This one, I'll get. So from my life, deliberately, this portion is to be a blessing. When you begin to live like that, what you are telling God is, Lord, I have capacity to handle greater things. Because if you remember, if you've been around since we began this series, I told you that God... His system for blessing his people includes blessing one so that others will be blessed. The reason that system is not functioning in our day is because the average believer is covetous and selfish. The average believer is seriously selfish. So once he gets a blessing from God, the only thing he or she is thinking about is me. And that's not the design of the Christian in the spirit. 
The way God designed the Christian faith, if you see the way the apostles lived, the Bible says that men sold their possessions, brought it to the apostles' feet, such that there was none amongst them that lacked. None that lacked. So I'm saying this to say to you that you must be deliberate in little. You must be deliberate in building faithfulness in little. My wife is here, she will tell you. At least she knew me even before it looked as if anything like marriage was going to happen to us. She knew me. I was youth president, I was youth pastor, I was her choir leader. And I, did, I was not eyeing her at the time, so just in case your mind is wandering to Jericho, bring it back to, to Mudiaga Street quickly. I was not eyeing her at the time. And she, she can give you testimonials about how I lived. Because I had little, those who were around me felt the trickles of the blessing. It's a way I have lived all my life. If you don't know that way now, it doesn't matter how much God puts in your hand, you will never be a blessing. Never. I've told you before, if you earn salary and only you, they chop up. You are eating gravel. I tell you for free. You are eating gravel. Because the Christian needs to understand that you are a channel. You are a channel for blessing. A channel. God should be able to confidently put another man's blessing in your hand. He says, I want to send a blessing to Stephanie, but Stephanie has not built the structures to be able to receive the blessing. And, or probably Stephanie has not come to a place in her life where she is qualified to handle that dimension of the blessing. So because Stephanie is, does not have what it takes to handle the blessing, I can give the blessing to Mike, guaranteed that I know that he will be able to discern my voice and channel the blessing to Stephanie. So when God puts money in your hand, the first thing you think about, like I said to us two weeks ago, is not how to buy a new shoe. A Christian who has learned how to be faithful in little, when a blessing comes to your hand, you ask the Lord, what is this for? You get a new job. As you celebrate your employment letter and you give testimony in church, you go and lie down before the Lord and say, okay, Lord, so there's a job in my destiny. I have received it now. What is it for? I know people who, the minute they got a job, 90% of their salary, I'm not exaggerating, 90% God told them is for kingdom work. There's a colleague of mine in the office. He sat with me in the car. And he said, Sir, I need to share this with you. A colleague of mine. You see him very unbecoming, very simple. You, 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 you see him, you don't think he's a Jim Jim Christian. We got the job the same time till now. He has not been able to buy a car. Till now. When rain is falling, he's under the rain. When people are closing, he's looking for Keke to take home. So that day, we, we did a, a training together. I took a session of the training. When we're going, he now entered my car. So he got to his bus stop, and I stopped for him to come down. and said, Pastor, let me share this thing with you because sometimes I'm feeling, I'm feeling bad. God told him, every money I give you is for kingdom. Every money. So he takes what is enough to feed him and his family. Then as money enters his hand, he puts it in kingdom. This our land project. He doesn't attend here. He sent one million naira. He doesn't attend here. I was lying on my bed and he called me and he said, Man of God, God said I should give something for the project. So me, I just thought, you know, a prophet has no honor in his hometown. So I said, okay, maybe 150, 200. When the alert came, one million naira. Now, I sat with him in the car and I said to him, I said, man of God, listen. Now that you are practicing it, it will look very difficult. But 10 years from now, 
men will covet what you have. They will not know the sacrifices you have made. I was listening to Papa Oyedekbo 2003. 2003. I was listening to Papa Oyedekbo. He was sharing a testimony. He said that he was a civil servant at the time. And then he, 2002, 2003, he collected his salary at the end of the month. And then while he was at home, his wife was cooking in the kitchen or something, if I remember the story correctly. And he decided, he felt a burden to pray. So he left the house and went into a field that was near the house. And then lay down on the ground and was worshipping God and enjoying God's presence. He said while he began to commune with God, then God spoke to him and said, Son, I'm enjoying your worship, but what did you bring for me? Uh-uh. He said, I, br I brought my worship, I brought my praise, I brought my thanksgiving, I even brought myself. He said, oh God, what did you bring for me? So he remembered that he just got paid salary. He didn't think about it twice. He just said, I brought my salary. When he got back home to tell his wife that he had given God all he had earned for the month, the effect on their family was, was, was immense. It was hard. He went to his prayer place and God told him, he said, even if you want to be poor, it's already too late. It's too late. Now, that's not the story. As I was listening to that teaching, ah, my heart shifted and I said, Kai, so God can honor men like this. As I was saying it, God now spoke to me. He now said, from now, your tithe is 30%. For two years, three years, you give me 2,000, I remove 30%. My salary is 5,000, I remove 30%. I did that thing consistently until the Lord came and said, now, you have shown me that you are faithful. I will bless you. So now, when, when certain miracles happen, people from nations of the world reach out to me and just want to be a blessing. I was telling my wife just now before I come. I said, ah, no, this money we need to spend. I said, don't worry. I'm not a poor man. No. I don't have money in my bank account, but if I need anything, God will send men from the nations. That's how I live. You know why? The minute you are faithful in little things, you qualify to handle Larger things. I'm saying that to admonish you tonight. This is the last block in this teaching. Be deliberate with your finances. Don't be looking at it that it is small. Be deliberate. Who gets blessed when God blesses you? If your answer to that question is nobody, you are already in trouble. Your finances are in trouble. Who gets blessed when God blesses you? Who goes to bed at night rejoicing that thank God, God blessed that man? Who? 